Thank you. I'll call the special meeting of the Hayward and Iowa City Council to order on Wednesday, June 16th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Um, Travis and Rob are not available tonight. We have uh, three agenda items uh, determining setting the fair market value for the telecom, updated the potential sale of the telecom, and then getting into a resolution for water restrictions as we uh, continue to deal with no rain. We will start with agenda item number one, uh, determine and setting the fair market value for the telecom utility. Uh, Steve Nato with Holler's Law Firm is with us on conference phone. Mike will give you, a, you want to start with an overview at all and then we'll go to Steve or just let Steve start with? with I just go ahead and let Steve start on that. Okay, Steve, good evening. Good evening, thanks for having me. Okay. Um, do you want any broad overview of, of the overarching process or where things are or should we just hone in on this determination of fair market value with, with kind of a mid-level overview of where it fits into the statute? I think it would be helpful to give uh, the council kind of the background. I know you and Mike have been uh, talking greatly in the last uh, month and a half or two months since we started this process. If you could give us a, an overview of where we are at with that, and then we will start uh, with the um, fair market value process, if you would, please. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, you know, as you are aware, there is a statute 388.2a of the Iowa Code um, falls within the city code section of, of the Iowa Code, and specifically 388 um, governs municipal utilities. And then 388.2a uh, sets forth a number of procedural requirements that must um, happen before a city can call an election on the question of whether to um, sell and dispose of a municipal utility. Um, and realistically, when a municipal utility sells, it has to be an asset sale because you don't have stock. So we're really talking about discontinuing the operation, ceasing to operate, transferring the assets and disposing of them, and then ultimately kind of formally, um, you know, taking action to discontinue the operation uh, of, and the, the oversight of, of the utility and bring it to a conclusion. Um, so you have to follow a statute before you can call the election. The, and, and, and of course, you know that you've received offers, you have selected which offer you would like. In that regard, we are now working on uh, an asset purchase agreement. Mike is waiting for that from me. Um, and and I, Mike, I told you it would be this week. It will probably be uh, early next week. Um, but the asset purchase agreement is not one of the things that has to be done um, prior to the election. Now, now, here we want for the election. This list in the statute of things that must be done to call the election, those things have to be done more than 60 days before. Um, the, the number of items have to be on your website more than 60 days before you can call, uh, or before the election date, and other things that have to happen before you can call an election. Having a final form of asset purchase agreement is not one of those things. So it does not have the same time pressure that these other items have. So, so the real focus right now is not only on kind of further memorializing the details of the transaction with the purchaser, that's gonna be accomplished by the asset purchase agreement. The other focus right now is dotting the I's and crossing the T's on this chapter 388.2a, and that's why you need to make a determination of fair market value. From the highest level, this statute, um, as you know from some prior action by the city, um, generally requires obtaining appraisals and then making a determination of fair market value. Uh, and neither the appraisals nor the determination of fair market value dictate the selling price. So none of this impacts the fact that you've received an offer at a certain price and you've selected one and we're now working on an asset purchase agreement at that price. So, so this determination of fair market value, think of that as a procedural step, but it does not substantively impact the selling price that has already been essentially agreed to by both parties. Um, so if you think about 
Now, I'm going to step you back for a minute and let you know the basis for this 388.2a statute. I was one of the authors of it, um, and uh, along with, with um, the Iowa Association of Municipal Utilities. And the intent was to make sure that boards and councils who are making these decisions and their rate payers and voters who are voting on these things have information about, um, from all different angles, about the economics of this utility. Not just that it's hard to run. And when I say this utility, I mean theirs, not, not yours, right? Anybody who's in this situation. What, what we don't want to have happen is a board or a council make a decision because none of them have expertise to run a utility and it's hard and it's losing money. And, they, and if they just throw up their hands and say, we'll accept whatever price we can get because we're losing money, so anything's better than nothing, they might disregard the actual value of the utility. So we're trying to protect communities, or this statute is trying to protect communities from um, challenging operations and, and maybe transferring the, the utility assets at you know, less than what they are worth. Because what requires them may have greater economies of scale, may be able to make um, very fair profits even if a utility can't, again, based on economies of scale or skill of operation or whatever the circumstances may be in any given case. And um, you know, we all know, if you think about a, you know, any, any business, if it's one that's hard for the current owner to operate because of economies of, of scale, um, you know, they're losing money, they may just want out. And so, but it may be very valuable to somebody else who can operate as a profit, right? So, so the idea is we need to be looking at that angle. The other side of it is, regardless of whether you're operating at a profit or not, um, you've invested in these assets over the years, and, and that's a hard, that's a, you know, a real value, regardless of the revenue stream. And then the third item is, if you have any outstanding bonds, make sure that you need to get enough money to be able to pay those off. So we're really trying to, the statute was designed to force people to be aware of the different ways to look at the economics. Now your situation is unique, because you got the temporary um, amendment to the statute that um, resulted in being exempt from having to obtain appraisals. So you don't have to do that. But you do have to follow the rest of this statute. And the next step um, is after, and I'm reading from the statute now, after considering the appraisals obtained, the governing body shall establish the city utilities fair market value the fair market value shall be the greater of any of the following. So interestingly, that language creates some, some constraint on the determination. It was really designed to make sure that you pick the highest of these. In your situation, you're not going to have that number because you don't have appraisals. So this is quite, quite unique. Um, so anyway, it says the fair market value shall be the greater of any of the following. One, the average of the two appraisals, which you don't have. Two, the depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. And three, the amount necessary to retire all of the city's outstanding revenue and general obligations uh, issued for purposes of the city utility. So, we decide the, the two appraisals for a minute. The depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. Um, Mike um, will know what your books show and whether you uh, have a depreciated value on your books. Item number three, the amount necessary to retire all outstanding obligations. It's my understanding that you do not have any outstanding bonds or notes or loans on the communication utility, and, and whether revenue or general obligation. If that's true, then item three is not a factor. So, so item one, uh, two appraisals you don't have. Item three, if you don't have any outstanding obligations, your fair market value by statute then defaults to the depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. And the depreciated value might be better for a CPA to, or an auditor to interpret that. Uh, but one way to interpret that would be just the depreciated value on your books. Mike, are your books kept in accordance with GAAP, where you track um, depreciation, or are you on a cash basis where you do not? 
we operate on a cash basis daily, but then do an accrual basis when we do the audit. Okay, so do you then have a depreciated value in your uh, I got a balance sheet? Right. Uh, at the end of FY19, the depreciated value was $877,833. We do not have the FY20 audit yet. Okay. Um, when do you expect the fiscal year 20 audit? Um, I believe they're going to present that at the July 14th meeting. No. Okay, so that, that being the case, um, I am I am comfortable, you know, relying upon the most recent audited financial statement is the best information you have as you sit here today. And this does not um, state when you have to adopt it. And July 14th, um, you know, is going to be right at about 60 days before the election. So I think you're better off to adopt to determine a fair market value today based on the fiscal year 2019 um, audited financial statements. Um, I, I think you can certainly, when you adopt that as a fair market value, you can make note that the, uh, that the council believes that the, rep, that the value of the utility based on its revenue generating ability, or re re you know, ability to generate revenue uh, that the actual value exceeds the depreciated value and that, you know, that the appraisals are, are what determine that value. So in other words, you could, you could make a finding that based on the statute, the fair market value in your situation needs to be the depreciated value, but that the council believes that the actual value exceeds that based on the revenue generating ability of the utility as reflected by the offers you have received. So in other words, you know, you could you could kind of, uh, if you do it right, have your cake and eat it too a little bit in terms of making sure the public, you know, doesn't think you're just saying, nope, the value is only the depreciated value. You're, you're, you're reaching that conclusion based on the statute and the fact that you got an exemption from the appraisal requirement. So, you, you know, it's up to you. You don't have to make this extra finding that I'm talking about. But if you like telling the full story, then it might be worth doing that. Other items that are required by that statute are the gathering of a whole variety of information, look back information over five years about performance, look forward projections, um, you know, rate projections, um, financial statements. You're required to consider alternatives um, before selling. You have done that and you have memorialized that with Mike's assistance. Um, you are ultimately going to have to put all of this information uh, on the website and, um, and have a summary on the website, which we're going to help with regarding um, the offers received and regarding all this information that I've just listed. That will have to go on the website. You're going to have to have a mailer that's going to have to go out to um, uh, the community. Uh, so again, it, this is, the statute was designed to um, kind of require focus on a lot of information that is relevant to a decision, you know, whether to sell and also the decision on how to vote on a proposition to sell. So, so that's kind of the statute and, and the overview as well as this, you know, focus on the fair market value. So um, I've talked a lot and I've covered a lot of ground. Your specific action item is the determination of fair market value. Having reviewed the statute, I think it needs to be the depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. And I think you can rely on the fiscal year 2019 audit as the best available information. And um, you should make a finding of fair market value based on that. And I think you are at liberty to make a legislative finding that um, the, the, um, the determination of fair market value was following the statute. Um, 
but that the uh, city was exempted from the appraisal requirement within that statute and, the, and that the council believes that the actual value exceeds the statutorily determined fair market value based on the revenue generating ability as reflected in the offers received. Can I answer any questions? We're still writing. Um, so, so basically, if they would adopt the 877, but then uh, add in that the city was exempted from the appraisal, so council believes the actual revenue generating value was much higher. Yeah, I would say, you know, uh, you know, substantially exceeds exceeds that amount, you know, as as reflected by the offers received. Okay. Again, only if you only if you like if you like that for telling the story, then you could do that. I'm just trying to help you understand the distinction between what the appraisals may have shown, um, the offers you received, versus the outcome of the application of the statute in the determination of fair market value, and 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 the reason why you're kind of stuck with the depreciated value on the books is because the appraisals are what would have fleshed out the revenue generating ability. And you get you've got the exemption from that requirement. So I'm trying to give you a close substitute for that, which is just a kind of a, a legislative finding of, of the council's belief. If you want to tell that story, but you do not have to do that to comply with the statute's requirement that you find fair market value as delineated in the statute. I think it's important we tell the whole story. So, yep. Yep. so on that, Steve, we need a motion and a second and a voice vote. Perfect. So number three has a value to it, but without a general obligation to be fulfilled, that's not valid. Or we have, uh, Steve, on that we have an internal loan from Electric on the on the telephone. Or on the telecom that has an outstanding balance of seven hundred eighty three thousand six hundred and twenty eight which is less than the capital assets that would that still be considered a general obligation on that um, the, the, the general obligation um, is something secured by the debt service levy okay. um, revenue um, obligations are payable from the net revenues and inter and an interfund loan is is actually um, done under the surplus transfer provisions of the code, but it is it is most analogous um, with you know revenue financing. So, but because it was done under the surplus, I don't know that you have to, to take that into consideration. But the fact that it's lower than the depreciated value renders it. Um, uh, it's not going to um, dictate your outcome, but it's good information. But the fact that the appreciated value is the greater number, I, I don't think we need to answer the question of whether um, the interfund loan constitutes outstanding revenue obligations for purposes of this statute. And we wouldn't consider both of those as obligations of the utility, like a combined value. That doesn't. That's not considered. Right now, there there are three individual considerations. Yeah. Okay. But would that, if we justify the value, would that help justify a, a higher value, or do that that doesn't come together that way? I I don't. Yeah, I don't think it'll actually come together that way. Okay. So, Mike, the, the aggregate total of the interfund loans is the seven hundred and some thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the appreciated value on on the fiscal year twenty nineteen books you said is greater than that. So I don't I don't think the interfund loans are relevant. Um, I mean, they, they need to be factored in, but they they're not going to drive the actual determination of fair market value under the statute because the depreciated value is is higher anyways. Mm -hmm. And Steve, if I'm right, the, every, everything we do on the fair market value really doesn't matter what we sell it for or anything like that. So, Correct. Correct. In fact, um, looking for the language here. Um, 
might adopt? Certainly. Okay. The, the City Council, in determining the fair market value under the statutorily required process set out in Iowa Code Section 388.2A, uh, determines the fair market value is the depreciated value of the utilities of $877,833. The council, based on the two competitive offers received, finds that the fair market value based on actual appreciation would be higher than the fair market value as determined under the statutorily required procedure. And I could maybe clean that up some. Uh, I think that's really close. Um, without having it in front of me, it's hard to wordsmith it, but you referenced the depreciated value of the utility, whereas the statute references the depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. Yep. So I would break the table. And you know, so, so if there's some asset that's included in the fiscal year 2019 audit, um, in that 800 some thousand dollars, if there's some asset that you're not transferring, then you know you should maybe make that adjustment. Um, in, you know, presuming that's still going to be the, the the largest factor for you. Um, and then as you went on in the phrasing of it, um, I think you're making a finding that the fair market value is the depreciated value of the capital assets to be sold. And then you are, you're, you're not, the next finding isn't, isn't a different fair market value, it's just kind of, um, and, and the board finds, um, further finds that the actual value of the utility, um, based on its revenue generating ability exceeds the fair market value as determined under the statute. Um, so you're not finding a separate fair market value, you're just kind of finding the fair market value and then making a determination that you believe the actual value exceeds that statutory finding. Okay, I'm scribbling, but I don't know. I think I've got all but maybe the last part. Just basically, sure. just some kind of a further finding that they believe yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And do we do we need to adopt that by resolution? So we can kind of read this into a record, but we need to get it cleaned up before we do, right?
council members have questions? Give Jim some time there. Mm -hmm. Since we do have one appraisal, is it worth using that as general guideline for the fair market value? We never got a full appraisal on that. Okay, it was an incomplete. Uh, yeah, he got halfway through it and couldn't couldn't finish it based upon okay. kind of wading through what was all required. Steve, we're just waiting a little bit by uh, Mr. Peckner, the city attorney, gets some things written down. Sounds good. They'll, they'll probably get it more succinctly than I have said it verbally. I don't know if I'd bet on that, Steve. <laughs> Unfortunately not. No. I, I, I only ask um, because I remember when our firm um, helped your utility be a trendsetter in the state of Iowa by, by starting. Um, and so it's quite amazing to um, be involved in the back end. to write it so I can read it. That's a little tough with my handwriting. I'm not sure here at the end, Steve, what you wanted. I've got now the Hayward and City Council pursuant to Iowa Code Section 388.2a determines that the fair market value of the utility system is the depreciated value of its capital assets in the amount of $877,873 and further fines based on the offers received, and that's where I start to tail off, that, that the utility systems cash generation value? I, I'd say that, 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 the, um, that the actual value of the utility system exceeds the fair market value determination under the statutory criteria. How's that? Oh, exceeds the fair market. Okay. I think we might have that then. We should have just had you speak into something that types it. <laughs> yeah, I'm right on the back side.
Okay. We gotta make a motion. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So I'd like to make a motion that the Hayward and City Council, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 388.2A, determines that the fair market value of the utility system is the depreciated value of its capital assets in the amount of $877,833. And further fines, based on the offers received at the that the actual utility systems possibly. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> that the utility system's actual value uh, exceeds the fair market value of the system as determined under the statute. I think that's what it says. Okay, that's my motion. I I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll second. There's been a motion by Tim, a second by Jen. This is obviously in regards to determining and setting the fair market value for the telecom utility. Any further discussion? And I understand from what you have told us, Steve, it does not need to be a resolution vote. It can just be a voice vote at this point. Correct, and you'll want the, the full motion to show up in the minutes so that it is um, memorialized in full. Certainly, Jacob does a nice job with that, our finance director. Hearing the motion in a second, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, that passes three to zero. Steve, that moves us then to agenda item number two, which is an update on the potential sale of the telecom utility. I know you've given us a lot of background. Do you have any further information? for agenda item number two. I, I don't, I, I think I jumped the gun and gave you the big picture. Um, so as part of number two, as part of the first action, but I would certainly be glad to answer any more questions that you have. It's obvious for them the background as you've been working with Mike and other staff members that we will continue to be uh, in a a good timeline to present this to the community for vote in September. That is the goal. I, I think, um, based on where we are, that um, that is likely to occur. One of my partners uh, here is working on the proceedings for the city council to call a special election. Um, Mike has been providing, you know, the various informational items and gathering those. Um, Mike is aware of the requirement to be able to get those on the website. We have talked about that. Um, so, and, and he's familiar with the process of getting the information on the website. So it's all kind of falling together. We will, in all likelihood, um, you know, need to uh, hold a special meeting at some point as, as this moves forward, uh, either, you know, late June or the very beginning of July, um, you know, just to um, kind of wrap up this process under the 3.2A in order that everything uh, kind of approves the summary that we're working on in order that it all be put up on the website and then at the same time order the special election. So again, that'll, that'll be happening maybe end of the month um, or first week of July at the latest so that everything could be on the website within 60 days of the election date. Council or staff or Mr. Pickner, City Attorney, have any further questions at this point for Steve Nadell? I do not. Should, should we move our next meeting earlier in July? Just so we make sure we've got a couple days around if that it's two I, months ahead of the... Yeah, I, I think we'll have the special meeting in either late June or early July anyway, and then we'll, we'll keep our regular meeting. I just saw you the next regular meeting, meeting July is the 14th, 14th. Okay. yeah. But you were going to have one before we'll, that. We'll have a special one before that again. Yeah, that's what I, just to make sure all 60 days are. Right. Okay. 
Hearing no further questions, Steve, we will uh, turn our phone off with you and we'll just move to our third agenda item and we appreciate your assistance with us today. Very good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. That moves us to agenda item number three, resolution 2031-27, resolution of the city declaring a water watch conservation classification uh, in the city and water use restrictions. Um, Travis or Mike going to address that for us tonight? Um, yeah, due to the determination that the next council meeting is July 14th, we wanted to go ahead and, and issue the, um, the water watch, which means um, outdoor watering uh, is prohibited between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and it's restricted to two times per week for, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Um, and there's restrictions like houses, businesses fronting the north and east shall be permitted to water Tuesday and Saturday nights. Houses and businesses fronting south and west shall be permitted to water Wednesday and Sunday. Um, the water should be used to wash the streets, parking lots, driveways sidewalks, building exteriors, and other non-essential watering. No watering should be used for non-essential cleaning of industrial equipment, machinery, or, and interior, interior spaces. Um, we'd just like to start there earlier, then hopefully we don't have to get into the next, um, the next round would be the water warning, which then only allows watering once a week. So. Levels are still holding, um, but the weather, you know, with no rain in the forecast, we, we don't want to wait till July 14th. So that's why we're bringing it to the special meeting. So if this resolution passes tonight, will this information be on the website and Facebook then yes. tomorrow for yep. residents to know? Question, I know people, how about if they just planted some pots and flower pots? Right, there are um, special exceptions. If you've just planted grass seed in a, pretty good section of you know that's an investment you you've paid for and there's uh, special exceptions please just call and and we'll get you on the ex exception list okay, so but you still want to do it at night I mean that's yeah it doesn't make any sense to do it on a day like today when you're when it's windy and hot yeah it just evaporates before it really gets down to the ground anyway so is there a resolution for 2021-27 so moved moved by Tim is there a second Second. Seconded by Jen. Roll call vote, please, for resolution 2021-27. Kurth. Aye. Feldhacker. Aye. Bergsma. Aye. On a three to zero roll call vote, resolution 2021-27 passes. Before I ask for adjournment, just a reminder that the Hayward Community Foundation gifting reception, Monday the 21st at 5.30 at the Community Center. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by John. Thanks again for making yourselves available for a special meeting. All in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Those opposed? The Warden City Council special meeting is adjourned. <laughs>